the generalized Fourier series representation of a function as, once again, f of t is equal to, once again, the sigma over some k's. We wish not to limit ourselves at this point to 0 to infinity or negative infinity to infinity. We wish not to limit ourselves yet because we wish to express it in the most generalized form. And we write, once again, some sort of a constant, let's call it C sub k, times some orthogonal function of k on the interval alpha to beta. Now once again, we must define what the C sub k is the constants, what they are precisely. And precisely, they are written as C sub k is equal to the inner product of our function f with our orthogonal function of k all over the norm of our function our orthogonal function, phi sub k squared. Now, at this point, you may be looking at this and you may be wondering, well, this looks all very abstract. It's all well and good, but it's too abstract. How do I use it? Why do I even care to use it? And the answer to that question is very interesting because sometimes when you deal with nature, you approach open problems. And when you approach complicated, challenging, open problems, you don't know what kind of a Fourier series representation to use. And it is in these precise cases where you wish to attack the problem in the most general way possible. And the reason why we would do that is that so we don't make any premature assumptions and if we don't make any premature assumptions, we are in essence using the mathematics to show us the underlying mathematical structure of our system without any bias. So we kind of step out of ourselves by trusting that the mathematics will give us the most abstract, general, nice representation of the exact natural phenomena that we are trying to solve. Now, all of these different representations here, all of them, these are Fourier series. And Fourier series are used to model periodic phenomena. Now let us say that we are trying to model non-periodic phenomena. Do these things break down? No, they don't. But Fourier transform theory, which is an offshoot of these Fourier series, helps us study non-periodic phenomena in a nice way. These representations, these are used to study periodic phenomena. If you wish to study non-periodic phenomena, well then, you should study Fourier transform theory, which I highly recommend. It's a very interesting field. What if you are in a laboratory? And what if you are taking data? and you don't have functions to work with. All you have are discrete data points. How do you work with those? Do you model it as a function? Well, you can. You can try. But let's say you don't want to go through the pains of doing that. What if you wish to work solely with your data points? In that case, discrete Fourier theory is your friend. Because discrete Fourier theory can tell you exactly how to employ Fourier analysis to solve the problems that you are trying to solve. Now, all of this so far has been theory. What about the applications? What type of applications can you already employ the theory to to try to understand a particular physical process in more detail? In fact, when Jean Fourier first introduced his whole concept of Fourier analysis, he used it to solve the problem of heat propagation. And we all know about heat propagation, how heat flows from hot to cold. 
Well, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, depending on the type of scenario that we're trying to look at. And his representation of Fourier analysis of heat propagation through a rod, which was the original problem that he tackled, it gave precise results. But although it gave precise results, the mathematical community still would not accept his mathematics because they hadn't been rigorously proven. So this is the point where you can say, I'm a pure mathematician and I wish to understand why this works, or you wish to be an applied mathematician and you wish to say how this works and how can I apply it to figure out the problems that I'm trying to figure out. But in terms of other applications, other than heat propagation through, for instance, a rod or a circular disk or some other engineering type of venue, you can use FOIA analysis to model vibrating strings, for instance. You can use FOIA analysis for modeling the vibrations of some sort of a particular, let's say, lengthy metal rod or even a string that you shake on one end. But in case that doesn't float your boat, there is an even more interesting application. In fact, you may have noticed that as I walk around the room, the pitch of my voice changes depending on where I am. You see, the reason, the reason for why the pitch of my voice changes is because your ears actually do FOIA analysis automatically. Or rather, your brain does it subconsciously, but you don't even know it. This is the most amazing thing. Your brain is wired to do FOIA analysis. Let me tell you how it works. As I speak right now, I have these sound waves coming out of my mouth. And these sound waves are getting transferred to you via either headphones or a computer or a TV but the sound waves are coming through from me to you. And these sound waves, they all have particular frequency components. They are composed of a mosaic of frequencies. And these frequencies are embedded within the Fourier series representation, omega sub k. They are embedded in there. And what happens when those sound waves reach you is that you hear different pitches of sound because you have these little hairs within your ears called cilia which vibrate at specific frequencies depending on the frequencies of the sound wave function which is coming through to you right now. So if you ever wondered the real reason why you are able to distinguish sounds of various pitches, the reason for that phenomenon is because your ears are capable of simultaneously absorbing a very wide array of Fourier series, a very wide array of these cosines and sines with these omega sub k's which are embedded in them, these representations of these sound wave functions. And this gets into the very fascinating field of neuroscience, computational neuroscience. They try to understand how you can use mathematics to be able to model nature, to really understand how things work. And if you remember when I mentioned calculators and the fact that calculators, they also use Fourier series to be able to dwindle down a complicated input into simpler inputs, it turns out that in the case of a calculator, it does a very similar thing. You see, your calculator, by breaking up an input into simpler constituent inputs, is doing the exact same thing as your brain is doing right now in breaking up my sound wave into these little components, each of which is composed of a particular frequency. And hence, you can distinguish the different vibrations, the different frequencies, and hence you can distinguish sound and pitch. This is the peak of understanding. This is mathematics at its best because it allows us to understand the underlying mathematical structure 
of the things that we work with. It allows us to see that such seemingly different objects as the brain and the calculator really work on the same fundamental principles. And it is here that we realize that what Fourier analysis helps us accomplish is something that we could never accomplish on our own sake. It helps us to see the true nature of things without all of the strings attached. It helps us see purity. It helps us see exactly how things work without making any assumptions, without having any biases. And that is the most amazing thing. Because if we can reveal the essence of how things work, then we can essentially strip away all the fat and be able to see things for what they truly are. And to see things for what they truly are is to be able to understand how nature works.